I've actually been using this as combing milk and it works really well. I read that it was a static remover and I was like, huh. So I spot tested a, like a little swatch and I tried combing with it and it actually worked amazingly well. So <laughs> all I do is kind of put it up into the air and let it fall onto my fiber. And that's it. And then that keeps it from getting that static see no static otherwise like you'll you'll see when it is staticky it will stick to the comb and you'll see that brown dissipate as well You just want to go side to side, transfer it from one comb to the next. As you can see, it's getting nice and combed out. And that brown will disappear after a few passes. It's just gonna fall off and blend right in. You usually get about 50% waste when you comb and card, so just keep in mind that you'll probably end up with 50% waste. I try my best to only end up with a little bit. So that's the first pass. Now we're gonna do the second pass, which we just go like this, super easy. When you use some type of combing milk, you'll get rid of the static. See how it's a little staticky right there? So the only thing I have to do is, usually this has way finer mist. That means I need to get a new bottle, but that's okay. It's not gonna ruin anything. I'm gonna have to head over to Walgreens and get another bottle of this like right now. See how that brown is dissipating? I'm just blending in. It helps when you fluff it up in the back so it's not completely toward the bottom of the comb and it will help it come off. If you end up with a few naps, that's okay. Just pull them off. It's bound to happen, so. But we did a really good job with this fleece, so. All the naps should just get caught in this comb right here, like your waist. That will be like, if there's any nips from combing and stuff, that should stay in there.
And that is the second pass. I'll take that off and show you. Here's our waist again. Just a little bit. So we've only got this much waist so far, which really is not bad. That's what we're going for. I need to, this is not exactly cheap. <laughs> so I try to have as least amount of waste as possible. So then again, we're gonna fluff it up so it comes off the comb easier. I wish this would spray as fine as it used to. But... Oh, there we go. There's the fine mist right there. Just had to turn it a little bit more. Third pass. Honestly, we don't even really need a third pass. There's like zero vegetable matter in this. I'm doing it more because of that brown and I just want to make sure that all the dirt is out of it. Little nippy. You really want to do like the least amount of passes that you possibly can because as you've seen, every time you do a pass, you end up with a little bit more waste. So you want to do the least amount of passes that you possibly can, if possible. This, my friends, is how you make a comb top. You can also get a big hackle after and take it all and put it all on the hackle and then just do one really long piece but I only have I think it's a fine hackle so I can't really put this on there I'm not really sure maybe I could like after it's combed and stuff but I'm not quite sure I've never tried it with this so this is super fine so And you can also spin right from your combs as well. You don't need to take it off. It actually makes it a little bit easier because you skip that whole dizzing off step, but I'll show you how to diz off just because this is a tutorial. And that's what I should do. <laughs> it up a little bit if you're having trouble getting it off. There we go. I could have definitely put a little bit more on there. See how beautiful that looks? So fluffy. Yeah, I definitely have enough room. I just wanted to make sure that I didn't overdo it. So next time I'll make sure I do a little bit more. Okay, so we're starting to pull some yuckies. So this is our waist. So now we've got this for waist from the amount that we did. I don't even need one more pass. I'm just going to diz this off because this is calm nicely. There's no VM in here. So I definitely don't want any more waste. That's for sure. So we can just switch the combs out. Okay. 
there's an R. These are my tools right now. I have a button that I just made a bigger hole in and then I've got the threader to pull it through. So again, you're gonna wanna pick it up and fluff it up. Make it easier to get off. You're just gonna wanna take, you're gonna wanna grab, grab it like, you know how men will grab their beards and go like this? You're gonna wanna grab it like that and pull a little bit and twist. And then take your threader and put it through your diz. Get that fiber. And pull it through. And then just diz it off. So let's see if I can get a good angle for you here. It's, you just want to pull from side to side usually. See how it's coming off nice and smooth. So we don't have too much on there. Just remember the staple length, just like when I showed you when you take it off the drum carter. Just keep that in mind, what your staple length is, and you just pull, and when it starts to thin out a bit, you push that button up. Starts to thin, push the button up, we're almost done. Now we have a comb top that we can spin. You just take it and make it into a little nest. And you just keep on combing. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't it amazing that you can just do that? I think that's so awesome. It's the best thing. So that went from this to this. Unreal, right? And as you can see, that brown is gone. Beautiful, and now we can spin this. Just like you'd spin any other roving, except if you take the time to do this and you spin from raw wool, you will find that it feels so much different when you're spinning it. The feeling of it is unreal. I, I can't even describe it to you in words, but please try it. I know that raw wool might be a little intimidating. I know that it was for me until I had a customer that wanted her alpaca blended with Rambouillet and she sent me a Rambouillet fleece, a full raw fleece, and I was not expecting that. I had never worked with raw fleece in my life, so I took the time. I took a full year actually to learn about this and teach myself how to scour correctly, etc. And it resulted in learning a heck of a lot about fiber. I would recommend if you're a fiber artist, definitely learning how to process from the raw. It makes a huge difference in your yarn. And when you buy roving or anything that's commercially processed, they take the wool and they put chemi they drench it in chemicals to get rid of all the vegetable matter and pretty much just disintegrate it versus sitting there and picking it all out. That step makes the fiber feel crunchy compared to doing it from the raw, washing it, combing it, and taking the time to do it this way. It's so much softer. And the feeling of it is just unbelievable, the difference. So if you're looking to make a extremely high quality yarn, go for the raw wool and fine Nui. Again, it is Casalana Fine Wools. She's from Australia. You can find her on Etsy, Casalana Farm. Um, I think it's Casalana Fine Wool Farm on Etsy. 
I will leave her link below in the description and you can find her on Facebook and she's got a group. So go find her group and you can buy from her there. She posts pictures all the time. Her name is Nui Milton. She's the owner of Casalana and she's the sweetest lady and I love her dearly. She's helped me so many times with finding this gray and she's helped me quite a bit and she's just an amazing lady who takes amazing care of her animals if you don't take good care of your animals then you will not get an exquisite fleece and she takes very very good care of her animals and that's why she's able to produce fleece like this so she is an amazing amazing woman i could never do what she does so Nui. You have the patience of a saint. You do things that I personally could never do. So thank you for producing the fiber that you produce and allowing people like me to buy it from you and being able to make beautiful things out of it. I love you dearly. So go find Nui if you're looking for amazing merino wool. I hope that this helped you and I hope that you'll be able to scour some fine wool and not be scared after I showed you, and I hope that this video helps you. So again, thanks for stopping by, and I hope to see you again. Bye. <sighs>